Today, we're gonna to talk about how console makes service networking easy. If we look at what's happening in the industry today, we're currently going through a transition from traditional static data centers with dedicated hardware and moving towards modern dynamic data centers. Migrating to the cloud presents an opportunity to enhance the time to market and scale for new applications or systems of engagement. Each cloud provider presents a unique set of strengths and capabilities, and many companies are beginning to leverage technologies from multiple providers. Meanwhile, core business databases or mainframes or the systems of record may continue to reside within private data centers on premise. This means we end up managing a mix of private and public cloud environments. Going through this transition creates a new set of challenges for the application delivery process during provisioning, security, networking, and deployment of our applications. When we look at the four HashiCorp enterprise tools, each one aligns with the workflows and challenges faced at each layer and lays out a common operating model for transitioning to the cloud. With our most widely downloaded product, Console, we are focusing on the challenges at the networking layer. Using Console, we can route and secure traffic to dynamic workloads spread across various runtime platforms and public or private cloud environments. A trend we are seeing during this transition to dynamic infrastructure is where developers are beginning to break down larger monolithic applications into smaller microservices. This can help increase agility and reduce the blast radius during aggressive release cycles. This trend is happening in parallel with the transition from static long-lived physical servers or virtual machines into short-lived containers or ephemeral cloud instances. Going through this transition to ephemeral workloads really drives the need for dynamic networking. Console allows you to move away from using host-based networking in the static world where we have high trust network perimeters with long-lived IP addresses and moves towards tracking services using their identities. In the public cloud, we no longer own the four walls of the data center or the underlying networking equipment. This means the boundaries between data centers are no longer clear, driving the transition to zero trust networking. Leveraging the service identities allows the underlying networking to be decoupled from the service above. Traditional networking technologies begin to break down when managing complex dynamic relationships between many different microservices and the corresponding rules connecting all of the different applications together. This can add a significant operational delay to approving new applications or changes. When managing services using their identities, we can operate at any scale without adding additional complexity. The core concept of networking within console is driven around creating a common service registry where information about the health and location of all of your services can be managed in real time. This information can then be used to drive network automation within your services and other networking hardware by discovering information using console's DNS interface or leveraging API integrations with other technologies. Console works across many different platforms and technologies, allowing you to seamlessly connect workloads across multiple data centers and clouds. For example, services running in Kubernetes can easily discover and communicate with services running on traditional cloud instances or virtual machines. Console has several native integrations with different platforms for bi-directional synchronization of the service registry catalog. This allows console to serve as the bridge between modern and legacy platforms. For our demonstration today, we have a simple two-tier application with a web front end running in a managed cloud Kubernetes service, communicating with a back-end API service running on traditional cloud instances in an autoscaler group. Here we can see the process flow for applications registering and discovering services within console. In our demo today, we're going to show services registering via a JSON definition file managed alongside the application deployment. We'll also show services automatically registering from within Kubernetes. Services are then able to query console via DNS or the API to discover and send traffic to each other. In this example, we are registering the API service and then the web service is discovering it via the DNS interface. This allows it to make a direct connection out to the service without relying on any traditional east-west load balancer in between. So let's see what this looks like in action. This is the basic console user interface. We can see the status for our services and nodes here. We've got console servers deployed to three different cloud instances here. We also have console clients deployed to our Kubernetes worker nodes using the console Helm chart. Here we can see our bastion host that we're using to reach into the cloud environment via SSH. Let's deploy our web application and service into Kubernetes.
Here we can see that the three pods for the web instance have started. Above, we can also see the console agents running on the Kubernetes worker nodes that we started previously. If we look at the services, we can also see that the web service has been registered within Kubernetes with its corresponding node port information. If we switch over to the user interface, we're able to see that the web service was automatically synchronized from Kubernetes into console. We can also see the Kubernetes logo next to the service representing this. If we drill into the service, we can see the node port details for each instance of the service. Let's browse out to our web service instance using the console DNS name. Here we can see that it correctly routes us to one of the available instances. Currently, it's showing that it's disconnected from the backend API service because we haven't yet started it. Next, we're going to scale up our API auto scaling group from zero to six nodes. Here we're using Terraform to update the configuration. So we'll speed this process up a little bit. Now that the configuration has been updated, we can switch over to watch for the active nodes within console to see when the new API servers come online. This process may take a bit of time, so we'll speed up this process as well. Now we can see that six new API nodes have registered within console. If we drill over to the UI, we can see the nodes are showing as healthy here as well. We also see that we have a new API service registered with six healthy nodes all running on port 9001. If we drill into one of the nodes, we can see that the health check is showing as healthy. Let's log into one of the API nodes and look at the service registration configuration. Here we can see the API JSON configuration that's bundled alongside our service. We can see that we're giving the service a name, defining the port that it's running on, and then supplying a health check that console can use to determine when our service is healthy and should be accepting traffic. Now, if we look at the Kubernetes services again, we can now see that the API service has been synchronized from console into Kubernetes. This makes it available using the native service discovery capabilities within Kubernetes. Let's drill into one of our pods and run a DNS query against the API service in console. First, we'll install the bind DNS tools within our container so that we can run the dig command from the command line. Then we use the name of the service, API in this case, followed by .service.console to query console's DNS interface for the service addresses. Here we can see the six node addresses that the traffic will be distributed across via round robin. Next, we can also run an SRV query to get the detailed port information for each service instance. These records can be leveraged by many different load balancers to drive automation for dynamically updating pool configurations. We can also query DNS using the native Kubernetes DNS namespace and see that the service is also available there.
Now let's look at our web service and see if it's operating as expected. Here we're showing it's connected to the backend API service, and we can see the backend is incrementing its count for each request that it receives. We also can see that it's rotating through the six backend nodes as we see the different host names referenced here. Let's switch to one of our API nodes and take the service offline by killing the process. This creates a circuit breaker pattern within console to automatically remove the traffic from the unhealthy node. If we switch to the user interface, we can see the status for the API app has updated to show one of the nodes has been marked as unhealthy. If we dig in, we can see the failed health check and the response details causing the failure. Because we stopped the service, it's no longer listening on the port, and so the health check is triggering as failed. This means it should no longer receive traffic from our other applications. Now, if we run a DNS query from one of our web nodes, we're only able to see five available instances. This means the failed node has been removed from circulation automatically. Now we can start our API service back up and show that console is able to pick up this change with the associated health check. This should bring the instance back into the traffic flow. Here we can see that the instance is marked healthy in the web interface. If we do another DNS query, we can see that once again, we get six nodes returned in the query as healthy. After getting started with the basics of console, you can begin to dive into some of the more advanced capabilities. We see many customers using console to drive network automation for their existing load balancers or firewalls. By leveraging console's edge triggering capabilities, we can dynamically update the configurations for F5, Nginx, HA Proxy, Envoy, and many other networking platforms with ease anytime there are changes to our services. Console is also being widely used to handle service discovery for east-west traffic patterns. By removing load balancers from the network path and leveraging console's distributed design, your services can connect to each other directly and reach higher scales while reducing latency. You can direct traffic using round robin or dive into the more advanced layer seven routing capabilities released with console 1.6. Another useful pattern is automating failover across distributed data center regions. Console can intelligently reroute traffic to nearby data centers if a service becomes unavailable locally. Thank you for watching this console demonstration. We hope this information has been helpful. To learn more, please visit hashicorp.com.